Now let's take a closer look at the new, more infectious COVID-19 strain called B117. It's a mutation of the coronavirus genome sequence. A total of 23 changes have been discovered in the variant. That's a relatively large number, by the way. But this could also explain why the new strain is also more contagious. Britain says that it is up to 70% more transmissible compared to the other strains. And it accounts for over 62% of COVID-19 infections that are seen in London. Scientists say that the spike in transmission could be partly due to how it affects children. They're less likely infected with the coronavirus, but the new variant is thought to make children as equally susceptible as adults. There is a silver lining to this. There is no evidence yet that the variant is more severe. The variant was first reported by the UK last Monday. That's after a surge in cases was seen in London and southeast England. Analysis revealed that the strain was found in COVID-19 patients in September. But where it came from, well, that is still in question. At least four drug makers, meantime, they're confident that their vaccines can still fight this new threat. BioNTech says that it's highly likely that its lab, its jab rather, will work against it. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, well, the German firm says that it can potentially adapt that vaccine in as little as six weeks. Moderna, AstraZeneca and Germany's CureVac, they are also confident of that and tests are already being run. Professor Martin Hibbard is from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. He joins us now for more on this. Professor, how worrying is this new strain to you? So this is a new strain. It looks a little bit distinctive and uh, I, it does appear, at least circumstantially, to be more contagious. So I th think we have to be a little bit worried about it. However, it doesn't change anything. This virus hasn't evolved to escape the immune response. And, you know, the normal standard process of uh, keeping your distance, wearing your mask and those things still work against this virus. So it's not that different and it doesn't change any particular policy associated with it. It helps understand it better. Is it common for a virus to have 23 mutations among other changes? No, this is what's made it very distinctive. So actually, a, a number of those mutations might not mean very much, but the fact that they've all accumulated together on the same virus is very important. And so this tells us that at least some of those mutations are, are going to be important to the virus, but perhaps not to humans. It might make the virus more sticky, able to transmit better, but probably not escape the immune response or, or other uh, differences. Professor Hibbard, let's get your take on this issue of how effective those new vaccines are against this new variant. I mean, those drug makers, they're saying they're confident that it's still effective, uh, that they could potentially even adapt it within as little as six weeks. Do you think that it will still work as easily as that without having to adapt the vaccine? So I'm pretty confident that that's correct, that this will not have an effect, these mutations will not have an effect on the, on the immune response. There is a little bit of a worry because one of the mutations, you know, allows the virus to become more sticky, and that's a very important component of the immune response, you know, in preventing the disease process. But I don't think this virus has evolved specifically to that, and as pointed out, most of the structure of the spike protein remains the same. So there's a, every confidence that this uh, will not affect the, the vaccine responses. I appreciate your optimism, but can we expect more mutant strains uh, to emerge? So, yes. So my worry is that as we roll out the vaccine, then uh, the virus will encounter these immune responses more regularly. And so the next new variant that turns up might be in response to this vaccine or other vaccines. And then we might see a, a mutant that arises, which may not be susceptible to these vaccines. And then we're back into the scenario of recognizing that and altering the vaccines to, to compensate for that. It, it might mean that we, we need to do this regularly and we're not quite sure yet how these coronaviruses are gonna to respond to the vaccines. It could be that it's, it's a long time before that happens or it might be a, quite a short time. So I think the changes are, are coming. Mm. Taking that into consideration, uh, Professor, 
Uh, you know, the UK's new virus strain, it, it kind of took us by surprise. We didn't really know much about it, although the UK did was aware from September that, that it existed. How can other countries prepare or prevent new strains? What can they do? So, fortunately, there's a, a great uh, worldwide effort, the GIS initiative, that uh, looks at these strains around the world, and many places around the world are contributing to this. The UK actually has one of the largest contributions, and that's maybe why it was able to recognize one of these new strains quicker than others. But I think everyone needs to contribute to that, and we need to be aware of when these new strains occur. This one you know, is a little bit worrying because it increases its transmissibility, but doesn't change this, the, the whole response to it very much. But there might be new ones that turn up, and everyone, all the, those genome places around the world that are able to do this should be monitoring their own strains in case these, these things turn up again. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, Professor. Professor Martin Hibbard from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine.